Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to go over my January beauty favorites with you. And I know it's a little late, but it's better than never. And I actually have quite a few products that I've been testing pretty diligently for the last four to six weeks, so I can't wait to share with you my thoughts. I'm going to start with a foundation that a lot of you guys have been curious about because I have been breaking my Solasu cushion streak to use this. This is the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation with an SPF of 15. I've been using it in the shade 30 which is a fairly good match for me, although it does have a slightly more pink undertone than my natural skin color. So I've been using the Armani Fluid Sheer in number 10. I know it looks insanely bronzy in the bottle, but it actually warms up and gives a slightly warmer tone to the foundation. If I know I'm going to be taking photos or filming a video, I like to use this alone, but on the day-to-day, -day, I do find it a little on the heavier side, so I like to thin it out with the Fluid Sheer, and I think this makes such a beautiful combination. Combination. Depending on the occasion, I will finish with a powder, and in that instance, I always use Burberry's Fresh Glow Compact. Now for a blush. Most of you know by now that I'm not really into cheap color as much as other color products, but I will say that the newest MAC Beauty Powder in Sunny Surprise has been quite a surprise. I really like it. It has a nude peach tone. It's a well-balanced color. It's not terracotta by any means, but there's a little peach, there's a hint of pink, to brighten things up and I am wearing it alone on the cheeks today. I know it's not the best color representation on my face because I'm not wearing very much of it, but I like to use this in place of bronzer and blush. I just wear this by itself. I put it on with my Chikohoto Takumi angled brush and I just like to diffuse it onto the cheekbones to give me a little bit more color. But overall, I think this beauty powder is one of my favorites that MAC has ever done. It's really long lasting. You get a generous amount of product for a good price Price, so I highly recommend that one. Now for an eyeshadow that is also from MAC. It's called Just Wing It. I really like the MAC satin formula. I think it blends easily and I'm a huge fan of using clean fingertips to apply eyeshadow, especially because I tend to wear only one or two colors on the lids for most occasions. So on the day to day, I like to use one cream color or one or two powder eyeshadows. So Just Wing It is perfect for me. I actually thought it would look more like a mocha nude on the eyes, but it actually runs strongly pink on my skin, and I am wearing it along the lids today. It's a versatile nude, especially if you like Naked 3 or Naked 2, then this is right up your alley, but it doesn't have any fallout. Because I have eyelash extensions on, I'm not wearing false lashes today. I do think that this would be a good bet just because you don't get too much fallout into your extensions. It's kind of messy to clean up if you use dusty eyeshadow formulas. So I'm really impressed with this matte collection. It's very wearable. It's very simple but neutral. If you like elevated basics or are looking for elevated basics to switch up your spring makeup routine, then I highly recommend Just Wing It. Now for a brand new eyeliner that I've been trying for a couple weeks, I'm always on the lookout for new pencil eyeliners because even my very, very favorite eyeliners such as Giorgio Armani's do tend to smudge on me at the end of the day. However, this Marc Jacobs Fine Liner, it's an ultra skinny gel eye crayon, is really nice for the waterline for underneath the lash line. I think it is a really, really good quality pencil. I like the packaging. I did read a couple reviews on Sephora saying that this is the same formula as the highliner pencils, which are the slightly chubbier versions, but I don't think it's exactly the same because this one does take a little longer to smudge. It's not quite as creamy as Armani's in the waterline, but it also doesn't move as quickly either. So I like to wear this one along the lower lash line. And out of all the pencil eyeliners that I've tried in the last six months, this one is my favorite. I will be talking about my favorite new Marc Jacobs beauty product though in my next video, so keep an eye out. Here's another product that I randomly picked up at Sephora. I was just waiting for one of the managers to answer a question that I had when I saw this Pharmacy Lip Bloom Lip Balm. I was initially attracted to a different flavor, but I ended up purchasing the Apple Rosemary. I bought one for myself and I bought another for my sister because I loved it so much. Basically, I bought it because it smells good, and I know it's funny to 
say that because I have tons and tons of lip balms, but this one's not bad for the price at all. And you guys know how particular I am because my lips are ultra, ultra sensitive. I felt that the fragrance of the apple rosemary was the most natural. It didn't have that super sugary artificial fragrance and it doesn't have a funky taste in the mouth. A lot of these thinner translucent balms tend to have a weird taste or aftertaste, but it doesn't and it makes my lips look glossy. It's not the most nourishing lip balm. In that instance, I recommend Sizzly's, which is still to this day my absolute favorite. I always keep a backup on hand because it's that good. But for the price, you really can't beat this pharmacy lip bloom. Although I can't say just yet if I would repurchase it, I still have been enjoying this quite a bit and I carry it with me in my travel bag and my gym bag. Now for a new release from Velour. This is part of their silk collection available at Sephora. Although I have eyelash extensions, these are fairly new. I got them in the last week. So prior to these extensions, I was wearing the Velour Fluff and Thick eyelashes quite a bit. This is a double layered style, so it's quite thick. It's very fringy. If you have fine eyelashes as I do, then this is going to be a great pick for you. I particularly like this Fluff and Thick style because the lashes are shorter. So at first, I thought I would like the super long ones, but when I tried them on, they looked a little too dramatic. So they would be perfect for evenings out. If you're going to a party or a club, then I recommend wearing the really long ones. But I think if you're looking for a lash that can take you from day to night, then the fluff and thick is the perfect one. Depending on how much eyeliner and eyeshadow you're wearing, they can look more dramatic. Since they're made out of silk and not mink, like the traditional velour lashes that I tend to wear a lot, oops, not in me, as you know, is probably my favorite style. I feel like these silk lashes really make it simple. These doubled up versions especially don't need as much maintenance. I can be a little less delicate with them and I've worn them at least four times and they still look like they're in pristine condition. So if you're looking for a new pair of false lashes to switch up your routine, then definitely try the fluff and silk. Last but not least, we have my very favorite product of January. This is the Colbert MD Stimulate the Serum and I had been looking for a new serum for quite a few months because it's not that I was bored with the with the lineup that I was using. I just felt that I needed a better multitasker, something that was anti-aging and moisturizing and brightening all in one. And I truly feel that the Stimulate is the only one that really gets every single category for me at the moment. My skin has been a little bit more volatile. I've been traveling a lot. I've been super stressed. I didn't even end up going to Bali because of last minute conflicts. And my apartment renovation has started. Construction's been going on. My budget's been blown up into pieces into smithereens already so it's been it's definitely been a journey the last few weeks but I will say that the Colbert has made it a lot easier to maintain good skin I just feel like his products really work for me I've only tried three thus far the tone control facial discs the serum and of course the masks the Illumino masks which I've reviewed before but ever since I discovered Sunday Riley's skincare early last year I felt like I hadn't been wowed by any other brand like their entire range of products not just one specifically that I love. So this Colbert MD range has really amped up my interest and renewed my interest in skincare again. So I've been using this quite diligently and it's just, it absorbs quickly, it feels refreshing, it layers well under moisturizers. I've been switching up my nighttime moisturizers and trying new evening creams and I found one that I really love and it works super well with this one. You'll be hearing about everything in due time, so just keep your eyes peeled. I will be reviewing the Colbert MD products that I've tried on my blog as well. They're may or may not be a giveaway. And since I did mention my renovations, it wouldn't be fair to keep you guys out of the loop. I've been super busy because I have met an interior designer that totally understands my vision. And so my mom and I have been working really hard. We've been planning, we've been talking, so much talking. So it is my first renovation experience and there have been a lot of bumps already, but I feel like I'm learning so much and I'm discovering so much. And luckily I'm pretty decisive. So I'm so, so, so nervous and anxious about showing you guys my new place. But thumbs up if you guys would like to see a before and after. I wanted to do a time lapse so you could see the apartment come together. So if you're interested in interior design, what it takes to do a full demo and renovation of an apartment, I would be more than happy to share with you everything that I'm experiencing. So let me know in the comments below and I will try to work on something for you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.